Welcome to Heaven's Online Dating Stories. And yes, I have made all of these faces on multiple occasions throughout this entire journey. Enjoy. What's up, you guys? This is Heaven with Heaven's Adventure. And yeah, this is a different video than I've uploaded in the past. I thought it'd be fun just to take a break from the accounting content, all the technical stuff that I share, all my work vlogs, which they will come back eventually. I am taking a break from all of that. Just to be honest with you guys, I have been pretty burnt out with work lately. I need like a long vacation. I need a break. <laughs> this audit I'm on currently is brutal and it's sucking the life out of me, but it's okay. It's all in the season, it'll pass. I'll be stronger because of it. But anyways, welcome to this video of talking about some of the online dating stories that I have. So, juicy topic. If you're new here, my name's Heaven. My middle name's Lee. My parents think they're hilarious. Hardy har har. They also were not super religious growing up, so my name just makes it sound like I'm a master's kid. Well, let me tell you, I am not. <laughs> um, just a little bit of my background so you can get an idea of who I am. I am a very strong Christian believer. My faith is the reason I am who I am. My faith is very much the reason I make any decision that I make in life. I don't date for fun. I'm dating for marriage. I don't waste anyone's time. I hope no one wastes my time. I'm also a very social person. I'm involved in a lot of things outside of work and in life and I have a, a lot of friends that I'm blessed with. So I did upload a video three years ago almost to the day when I was 25 years old before I tried the online dating, which I didn't say that in the video, but I was not online dating at the time, but I uploaded a video about being single at 25 years old as a Christian. And I talked about it and I rewatched that video this morning and I still stand by everything that I said. I'm still in hindsight, proud of myself for putting that out there. It felt very vulnerable, but I'm not ashamed of being single. I think the Lord is preparing my heart for somebody great. And I, I just, I'm thankful that he's guarding my heart. So the last almost two years I've been online dating. Y'all, I have gone on so many dates. So many dates. <sighs> Also, another big piece of who I am that affects this whole dating thing for me, I just naturally friend zone any guy, okay? I can know instantly when I meet someone if there is potential for a romantic thing or if they're gonna be friends forever. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they're gonna be friends forever. So that being said, I'm not attracted to many people at all. This is kind of a curse. It is frustrating because I've met some really good guys on some of these dates where I'm just like, I'm not interested. But another part of it is I do think that is part of the Lord guarding my heart. I do pray every day for my future spouse and I will be attracted to my spouse. I don't plan on settling with anyone just because they're a good person. Like I need that chemistry as we all want and desire. And I think it'll happen in due time. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started, you guys. This is supposed to be a lighthearted video. I hope you guys can laugh with me on some of these experiences. Again, I went on a lot of dates. We're not gonna share all of them, not even half of them. So I have since deleted the apps. I'm taking a long break. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so it's a good time to share these stories. When I matched with these people online, I never saved their name in my phone until I went on two dates with them. So even one date, I still just had their phone number when they would text me. And when I would talk about them to my best friend, I used a code name, like a nickname that I had for them. So in this video, I'm using their real nicknames that I had for them because I genuinely don't remember some of these guys' names, <laughs> which makes me sound like an awful person, but I just needed that emotional detachment. I don't wanna get too invested before I really get to know this person. They're all nicknames, so their names are protected for this video. We'll start with the first one. Farragut is this guy's nickname. We hung out like seven or eight times. Like this guy was great. I really liked him at the beginning. The thing with this guy is he just had no sense of humor like at all. Like he didn't laugh at things. He didn't appreciate a sense of humor. I realized through talking with this guy that I laugh as I talk. Like I literally laugh in conversation with people that it's just who I am. I just laugh at everything. I'm also just a comedy person in general. On top of no sense of humor, he didn't understand sarcasm. Now that's a problem with anyone with me because I am an extremely sarcastic person. So it got to where I was having to filter my responses to him in normal conversation to make sure I'm not being sarcastic. Like I literally had to change my brain of the responses I would normally have because he wouldn't understand them. And that's okay and I think over time it's fine, but it just got to where communication was difficult. We did have some big spiritual differences that we found out later that, are two, that were things we could compromise on because they are who we each were but the story of this guy the funny part of Farragut was we're driving in the car we're going geocaching I'm driving he's in the passenger seat like conversation like stalled and it was like Tuesday night and I said something like oh at least tomorrow's hump day and he whips his head around and stares at me just stares and I was like today today's Tuesday I was like tomorrow's Wednesday yeah tomorrow tomorrow's hump day and he just stared and he was like what and I was like, tomorrow's hump day. Never had heard of hump day, okay? So he was like, I thought you meant. <laughs> so here I am like crying 
laughing, but this guy's never heard of hump day. On top of that, he, this dude clearly lives under a rock in general. Um, even just some things that I would mention about war in the Middle East. There was something big that happened. We pulled our troops back in at the time that I'm talking to this guy. He didn't even know we were in war. He was like, I thought war ended in World War II. And I was like, well, how do you, what? So just in general, me and him had some differences. He is a really great person though. I am still hardcore rooting for him to find a really good Christian spouse. He deserves it. Um, I kind of wish we were friends on Facebook just so I can see when he does get married because I'm rooting for him. He's a good one. All right, this next guy, ATC. I knew within the first three minutes that this guy is not going to get out of the friend zone, okay? We meet up for coffee. He works night shift. I work day shift. So he, we met up after his shift, before my shift. He was a little delirious at this point, but it helped the date go better because we were literally laughing until we were crying. Like we had the same sense of humor. He's a hilarious guy. We had some commonalities. However, as I'm in line to buy my coffee, he's a few people behind me. He texts me. He's like, hey, I'm in line. And I was like, okay, I'm about to buy my coffee. I turn around in line. He sticks his head out and waves. You guys, this guy was three plus inches shorter than he put on his profile, which the height thing is not necessarily important for me. It is a factor, I'm gonna be honest with you, but it was the fact that he lied about his height, which is a very clear thing to see in person. So what are you lying about that's gonna take time to figure out? Do you know what I mean? Especially on this online profile when things are literally in metrics and you literally say who you are physically, you can't lie about those things. You're literally setting yourself up for failure. So from the start, I already was questioning this guy's entire integrity. But anyway, we talked there at the coffee shop for like two and a half hours. We laughed until we cried. He's a funny dude. We did not have chemistry romantically. I was not interested. He calls me on the drive back home. Like as soon as we left, he calls me and he tells me, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a daughter. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I was like, we literally talked about family. Like how did this not get brought up? Clearly he doesn't want to mention it. It's a big thing, I get it. But I told him, I was like, in the future, you know, as you go on these other dates, oh, you might want to bring up this kid thing early on if you do feel a connection with somebody. I was like, that is an important factor to know about somebody. He was funny, but he was not my, he was not my dude. All right guys, this next guy, Marathon. No, he does not run marathons. So this guy lives like four hours away from me. I'm kind of upset I even matched with someone that far away because I hate doing the messaging and phone calls calls ahead of time. I just want to meet you in person. Again, I think I can initially know immediately if this is going to work out or if it's not going to work out. So we had been talking for a couple weeks. He's sharing his life story. I think this guy just really needed a friend to, for someone to listen to him. He had been through some stuff. Generally a really great person. So we finally get to meet up. I had to drive two hours down to Chattanooga's where we had our date. This dude, he was just odd. <laughs> Now let me first say, I really enjoyed our date. That was probably my favorite date I had gone on with these random people online. It was spontaneous. We just walked around. We did things in the city. We ended up at this outdoor concert. Then we ended up at this like little small fair carnival thing. Really, really fun date. However, nothing he said lined up with other things. He was very inconsistent in general. For instance, he was like, where do you want to eat dinner? I was like, oh, all kinds of places. I love Chattanooga. Here's some options we can go eat at. He was like, great, I love sushi. Let's try your favorite sushi place. I was like, oh my gosh, dream come true. Let's do sushi. We get to the sushi place. He was like, I've never had sushi. I was like, then how do you love? Then and later on the conversation, he was like, oh my gosh, there's a boba tea place nearby. We should go get boba. I was like, oh my gosh, I love boba. Let's do it. We get there. He was like, I've never had boba tea, which he never said he did, so that was fine. But I was still like, okay, what do you like? Let's, let's do something you enjoy that you like. We can go do that. We did the sushi. We did the boba. What do you like to do? And he had talked about he'd been to Chattanooga multiple times. Then later on the day, he said he'd never been to Chattanooga. I really couldn't trust anything the guy said, to be honest with you. This guy also, everywhere we went, he kept like looking over his shoulder. And then as he's talking to me, he was like looking past me and not at me. And then I made a joke. I was like, are your wife and kids going to show up at any minute? He was like, no. But I was like, do you have a wife and kids? Like, this is something you talk about. So I don't know. He was an odd character. So I went on several single dates between this guy and this next guy. Um, one of them was a pastor and he was a really cool dude. I liked him. We went on a couple dates. He ended up breaking it off because he was pursuing someone else. And I was like, genuinely happy for him. As a Christian, devout in my faith, and he was devout in his faith, I was excited for him. If he found someone that he feels like is a good compatible match for him, then great. Also, I was a little hesitant on the fact that he's a pastor because I don't see myself as a pastor's wife. That's a whole reputation. That's like a whole world. Your image is so important. I don't see myself as a pastor's wife. Not that I couldn't do it, you know, that would be, the Lord would prepare me for that, but that is, that's a big deal. So then I took a really long break after that. I was a little emotionally spent. Then I got back on in January of this year and I met this other guy. 
Colonel. This guy was sweet. He did live several hours away from me, so we had to do the whole messaging. We talked on the phone, I think, once. Um, he was more reserved. He was quiet. We decided to go to a baseball game. Pro tip, sporting events are great date areas because you can talk together without having to stare into each other's soul, but you can also be watching something, so the awkward silences aren't really a thing. So yeah, love sporting events and dates as you're getting to know somebody. The game started at 12. I told him I'm going to try and park at the parking garage by 11.30. Gives me time to walk over there. He was like, perfect, sounds great. He's driving down here to Knoxville, so he had a several hour drive. So this guy got stopped in the interstate because it, like a semi was on its side or something. Like literally the interstate was shut down. So he was in traffic, out of his control. I felt bad for him. I'm like, I am so sorry. He's apologizing immensely. Like this is so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I get it. I understand. But I decided to walk to the baseball game just so I can watch it from the outside. Sorry guys, my camera just died. But anyway, so I walked to the baseball game. I decided to watch it from the outside. So I'm standing outside with this ticket guy at one of the entrances and me and him get to talking for... 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour I'm standing out here. And I told the guy, I was like, yeah, I'm waiting on this dude. I was like, it's a first date. You know, I don't even know really what he looks like. He could be any of one of these six photos that I have on his profile. Me and this dude were talking like for a while. Now he was married, had kids. So it wasn't like a date with me and this ticket guy. Again, it wasn't Cardinal's fault. It was just the whole situation. Then one of the workers that work for the, you know, cleaning up and doing stuff for the baseball game asked if I wanted to sit in his work truck while I'm waiting. Cause I was like standing in the sun. I was getting sunburned. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> I'm not sitting in this guy's truck. I mean, oh my gosh, it was just hysterical, the whole situation. An hour and a half later, the guy shows up. The baseball game's half over. He's there. I felt bad for him. Again, he's apologizing over and over and over again. All the people I was talking to at the ticket gate entrance were like staring at him. Like, how dare he be this late? I also told the ticket guy, I was like, yeah, he got our tickets. You know, he's, he's a gentleman. And he was like, a gentleman would have sent him to you so you can get into the game. <laughs> So anyway, the date itself for the rest of the baseball game that we had to spend together was kind of a dud. This guy didn't talk at all. He was very shy. It just, conversation was difficult. And I can talk to anyone about anything. And so there were a few things I know that he really liked. So we talked about some things that he really enjoyed that I cared nothing about, but I can just hold a conversation with anybody. And then he tells me during the date that he went ahead and deleted Hinge because he feels such a strong connection. And that's when I, my stomach like flipped. And I was like, oh God, I was like, ugh. It made me feel very awkward. So then we had a phone call the next day. I planned to tell him that I didn't feel like there was a connection here. He ends up telling me his life story. I was sick to my stomach. I'm, he's getting invested. He literally deleted his app. But I did agree to go on a second date. Well, then it got to where we kept having to reschedule, kept having to reschedule. And then I called him and I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think this is gonna work out. And I didn't wanna waste any more of his time. And this is all within just a few days. He was also a college professor. So even just time-wise, it was difficult for him to get down here. The funny thing that happened with him on the date was this guy beside him, and this was a packed out um, baseball game. It was an intense, it was literally like one of our rivals. And we, he had really good seats and I thanked him for those seats over and over. Like he literally had us behind home plate, like up high, it was beautiful seats. The guy beside him, this older man, his hat flew off in the wind and got kind of stuck. We're on the back row and it got kind of stuck on the concrete, like down over the concrete is like the ground, like people walking. And I was like, oh my gosh, grab his hat, grab his hat. And I was like, it's gonna fly away. And Cardinal looks at him and just like, gets nervous. And I was like, grab it. I was like, it's literally gonna fly away, get it. And he just looks, he was like, oh no. He's like, I, I can't, I can't do it. So then I reach over and grab the guy's hat, give it to the guy. He's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And he realized it came off. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Then he was sitting there like beating himself up. And he was like, oh, I should have said that. And he's like, I should have done that. And I was like, no, it's okay. I was like, it's fine. And he was like, I just, I don't, I don't talk to people. He's like, I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> and which I gathered that way before he even had to say that. But it was just funny. I'm such an extroverted person. I would have worn him out. Like he would have been exhausted even if we lasted another week like he would have been drained so did not work out with him he's another one that i'm hoping works out with somebody and i'm sure he will i just hope he puts himself out there and is able to meet different people because he is extremely shy and like doesn't talk to anybody so i'm, I'm a little concerned on how he's gonna meet somebody but maybe someone new will come to his church and change his life we'll see oh my gosh you guys i forgot one more person and i don't even have him on my notes like i just forgot about him so yeah i'm pretty sure this guy's nickname is golfer but anyway me and him went on a dinner date it was great we clicked on a lot of things we had a lot of things in common all right, I like this guy. So went on second date. Second date was at a baseball game, which is my go-to. We talked about a lot of things. It was great. We were there for hours and he was very physical makes him sound like a bad person. I don't mean it like he was trying to get in my pants. I just mean he was very touchy feely and I don't know him yet. He's still a stranger. So then he tells me that he just broke up with a girlfriend of seven years.
in years. And I was like, oh gosh, I was like, that's kind of a big deal. How do you feel about it? Like, how did the breakup happen? How long ago was this kind of thing? Then he tells me they were going to get married. Like they broke off the engagement three months prior to our date. That was alarming because just from the other things that he had shared, it kind of made sense. This guy really just needed a season of healing. And I don't mean that as a like holier than now, me telling him like, hey, you need to go figure yourself out kind of situation. But I think generally, even like therapy or counseling or even a best friend to talk these things through. And I don't think he had anyone to talk through his feelings. So he unloaded a lot of that on me. I'm happy to help him process some of these thoughts and feelings, but I can't do that as a potential new girlfriend. He really just needed someone to listen and to be there for him for a period of time. Time as he heals through this. His ex fiance is the one that broke it off and he was very hurt by it. And I hate that for him. Like that's devastating. I can't imagine. But yeah, they also lived together for like four-ish years. And then I had some questions about how do you view sin if you're living together before marriage? You know, that's a whole other conversation. The other funny thing about this guy that literally makes me cringe just thinking about this. So that baseball game was on Saturday night. Sunday morning and I help out at my church's cafe. We have like this coffee stand thing. So I do that Sunday mornings. This lady comes up to me at the coffee stand and was like, are you heaven and I was like yeah and she was like oh my gosh and she was like I'm so-and-so's mom and I was like oh my gosh hi so nice to meet you and she like shakes my hand she's like I'm so glad that he met you like he is head over heels he is tickled you seem like such a genuine nice person y'all my stomach flipped upside down I was about to poop my pants standing there I was sick to my stomach. I wanted to throw up. It's sweet that he told his mom about me and everything, but the fact that I, I wasn't gonna continue this with this guy and here his mom is already meeting me and then she brings over his dad and so I meet, I talk to him for a second. Then she tells me that they joined our church that day and they were in the new church members class that morning. I was panicking in my head. And yes, I've seen his parents at church since. That was a little bit ago. No, I have not seen him at church. That was a whole other conversation. I don't think he's as involved, but yeah, you guys, oh my God. Gosh, that that was hard to go through that was made me feel awful again on that note those are my big online dating stories I hope it doesn't discourage you if you're trying to find your person online a lot of people have found their person I feel like I have really put forth the effort there for a while and I have tried it and I, honestly if I never go back to online if I'm single forever I can't regret it saying I should have given it a better chance because I gave it all the chances <laughs> I did the online dating thing it's exhausting you guys this world is brutal it is crazy and we we live in such a sexualized culture and there's so many expectations and just like trust issues like you really can't trust many people because they have the whole world at their phone we all do and social media and just messaging multiple people at once going on multiple dates with different people it's a crazy world out there y'all it's exhausting and if you guys have some funny stories i would love for you to share them with me you can email me at heavensadventure at gmail.com you can comment down below but everyone else will see it as well but Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray every day for the people seeking a biblical marriage and that they're doing the right things to find their spouse. And I just pray that the Lord will give us our people at the right time and that we don't feel pressure or we don't feel like we need to settle. But it's also just the stigma in society of being single the older you get and in the church when everyone else is married with kids and you're still single. And it's like, I did nothing wrong. I'm trying, I promise I'm trying. But anyways, you guys, thanks for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it and a little break from the account this on my channel and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> Bye friends.